Did I just start calling you Captain? Captain Rob. I like it. Hello? <coughs> God is good. All the time. All the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this absolutely gorgeous Sunday morning after Thanksgiving. Glad you're all here. Uh, welcome the Ferguson family uh, as we celebrate uh, baptism as well. So what a, it is a holy time indeed uh, for the church here this morning. There's an awful lot going on in the life of our church. Please note those things in the bulletin, on our website, and on the, on the various posters and around the church. Search for the Christ Child is next week. If you haven't experienced that, uh, do so. There is still uh, some need of some help, so if, you, if you'd like to help, let me know, or Michael Kelly, who's meandering in the back somewhere. Also, uh, there is one, um, one class that's been postponed, The Secrets of Your Family Tree, that meets on Wednesdays at 7.30. We'll begin that up um, in January, second Wednesday of January. Uh, Bob Fortune, come on down. And while Bob's coming down, next week is Food Sunday. Please bring your cans, uh, non-perishables to the, to the church and to help support community care and the Brookside Hunger Center. Good morning. Uh, it's the time of year that we uh, announce uh, our men's fishing retreat. Uh, we have our first meeting is coming up uh, this next Saturday, December 1st at uh, Kim's Restaurant. 
uh, it's at 8 o'clock. Uh, the retreat goes to Big Bear Camp up in, uh, up in Ontario. Uh, it's, it's September 6th to the 14th. Uh, we go up and we do catch fish. Uh, we catch some uh, northern pike, some walleye, and some perch. You have really big ones. That's why I have my hands out, really big ones. And, uh, but we also uh, really enjoy uh, nature, God's gift to us. Uh, we learn uh, more about ourselves. It's a great fellowship, and we learn about God. Uh, it's just a great trip. Uh, if you need some more information, I see Bill Ferguson is out there, and he's been there, and Dick's been. Uh, Dave Gillock, I didn't see Dave, but y you can ask any one of us uh, any uh, more information. But we'd like to have you come and just join in the fellowship uh, on December 1st at 8 o'clock. Uh, find out about it. Uh, it's just a great, great opportunity. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> hey, Bob. Well, I, I also learned how week. to tell fish stories <laughs> conventionally. <laughs> okay, Larry, let's. You know what about the uh, the search for the Christ? I was supposed yeah. to also mention that the the help that, that we need is is some of you get to be actors, um, and it's kind of fun. And it's not you don't have to be good at it; you just have to be there. And if you're good, all the better. And then they need some assistance staff as far as uh, the thing. But we have a lot of visitors here now, and I don't know. It's you come in, and it's like a, a, a walking drama through the building of all the different things in in the time of Christmas, the first Christmas, and it's beautiful. And it's been going on for what, 25 years? 26 years. 26 years. They had a thousand people come through last year, more or less, and it's it's been that way each year. So we encourage you to, to visit it. It's you know you can drive to Pennsylvania and you can go to these big dramas that have these stadiums for these Christian um, things, or you can come right here and save a lot of gasoline and enjoy it. So please Amen. and volunteer if you want. Just be brave about it. All right. Well, thank you, brother. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, this morning I want to touch on the reason for the season. We all know that celebrating the Christmas season is an extra special event for Christians, and the joy that we share with one another and hopefully to those around us is like no other. And also it's a great opportunity to share our faith. I do get concerned, though, that the commercial side of the holiday season can be a real distraction to what it's really about. There's nothing wrong with shopping for each other and giving presents and gifts, but certainly there's much more to it, right? Paul speaks of being in the world, but not of it. Jesus says that in John 15, 19, we are not of the world. The writer of Hebrews says we're only sojourners here and that our real home is with God. So as we embrace this Christmas, let's make every effort to not be distracted by the commercialization of the season, all the hustle and bustle and all those annoying commercials and ads and junk and all those, they're popping up everywhere. And let's try to remember that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And it's a worldwide party that's being thrown in his honor. It's him we celebrate this time of year. So without further ado, let's come to the party. Uh, why don't you all stand and we'll do some singing together. And, uh, you know, if your legs get tired from dancing too much, you can just sit right back down. It's okay. The glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy Let it ride. 
excited about God loves you. Amen. Amen. Someone say, God loves me. God loves me. And someone say, that gives me hope. That gives me hope. Amen. Gives me hope too. Start this over. I have.
God of heaven loves you. Loves you. To God be the glory. Well, it's time to say hi to someone near you and hi to someone far away from you. So. Scripture lesson today is from 2 Samuel, chapter 23, verses 1 through 27. And these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man exalted by the Most High, the man anointed by the God of Jacob, Israel's singer of songs. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, when one rules over men in righteousness, when he rules in the fear of God, he is like the light of the morning at sunrise. On a cloudless morning, like the brightness after rain that brings the grass from the earth. It is not my house right with God. Is not my house right with God? Has he not made with me an everlasting covenant arranged and secured in every part? Will he not bring to fruition my salvation and grant me every desire? But evil men are all to be cast aside like thorns, which are not gathered with the hand. Whoever touches thorns uses a tool of iron or the shaft of a spear. They are burned up where they lie. These are the words of our Lord.
take your place. No one else could take your place. I feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way. Help me find. again good morning it is a privilege and an honor of every Christian church throughout the world to celebrate the sacrament of infant baptism baptism is really the sign that God gives us that God's grace is alive and well in the heart and soul of all the believers and, and as uh, Chase and Tyler bring their family up uh, to be baptized um, just wanted to let you know that Baptism is the um, outward sign of the inward grace of God. And so um, as, come forward. As they come forward, uh, this is a holy time. And remember, we are all uh, part of that, uh, that body of Christ. And there's two certificates, baptismal certificates in the back after worship. Uh, since we are all witnesses and all, if you would please sign uh, the baptismal certificate for both Chase and Tyler. That, that, would, be a, that would be a wonderful testimony of, of the oneness of God's house. And so if you would all pe please uh, bring out this, this insert and follow along and, and respond where the, in, in, where the bold face type is. This morning we celebrate the baptism of Chase William and Tyler James Ferguson. And so we celebrate both of them here this morning. I have a couple of questions to ask of you first. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power it gives you uh, to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? the important one. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture Chase and Tyler in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, profess their faith openly, and lead a Christian life. And all of you are not off the hook. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you pray for one another in the Christian faith and life and include Chase and Tyler now before you in your prayer? lived up.
up to that statement they just made because I know that both Chase and Tyler have been prayed for before they were born and continue to be, be prayed for afterwards. Now let us all as a congregation uh, join in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of both the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? believe in Jesus Christ. believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing else existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth life. In the days of Noah, Save those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the church a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them for freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and they who receive it, to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ they may share in his final victory. Chase William Ferguson. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit rests upon you, that being born through water and spirit, that you may grow and mature as a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just wanted to walk you down and introduce you to more of your family. These are all the people going to help uh, tell you the stories of Jesus, keep you safe, and give you the joy of, of faith and, and living in the Spirit. They'll all get to know you pretty well. And judging by how you're looking around, you, you're going to get to know them. They'll be running after you, caring after you, teaching you Sunday school lessons, and being in church with you. And they're all going to love you. James Ferguson, I, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit rests upon you, that as you're being born by water and spirit, that you may grow and mature as a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to walk you down just a little bit back <laughs> and introduce you to your new family. All these people have been praying for you, will keep praying for you. They're going to teach you all about Jesus and all the stories of our faith. You're going to be 
faith and you're just going to be blessed beyond measure with the, all the witness of faith that you'll, that you'll see and, and experience the wonderful things you guys are going to see. And all these folks are going to be traveling along with you. now our joy to welcome Chase and Tyler, our new brothers in Christ. God bless you both. Let's give them a hand. You may be seated. Boy, they are latching on to every word. Well, without a doubt, that was an amazing joy that we all shared this morning, continue to share as, as we see them grow and mature as disciples of Christ. And many joys that surround us, the joy of, gosh, uh, getting to be kind of a full church here on Sunday mornings, the, the joy of, of friends and family coming together, uh, the joy of, well, you see everything decorated. I just wanted to uh, thank all those who helped decorate. We had a lot of youth here, a lot of adults. We had a lot of singing and a lot of praying, and a lot of love has gone into decorating this sanctuary. This happened uh, yesterday, yesterday morning. And so uh, thank all those. Uh, it's a joy to, to have so many uh, committed folks coming. Uh, the joy of so many things happening in the life of our church and the community. Um, joy is beyond measure. But in the midst of joys, there are many concerns that, that weigh upon our hearts and deep within our souls. So please note those on the prayer list. And I have uh, a couple of more to, to add to that list. If you would please pray for the family and friends of Bill Clark. Um, that's Georgia Austin's cousin who passed away. And also uh, the family and friends of Dustin and the family and friends of Johnny uh, Griswold. Please also pray for Cal Woods as he has surgery tomorrow, and Wayne Ogle will have surgery tomorrow as well. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? I have a joy. Well, at least it is for me. I don't know about Beth, but this past Wednesday we celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Congratulations. As Tom gets around to, to Beth, I do also another uh, anniversary, Modesto and Sarah Espinoza, who may still be in the, in the building, uh, celebrating their 50th anniversary today. So celebrate with them. I just want to lift up and joy the absolute amazing time we had with the youth last week at Wanapi. Um, there were three adults and 12 kids, and it was um, such a God-filled weekend. And I thank all of you for your support of the youth group as it grows. And I welcome all of you to venture slightly past the kitchen. It does exist, and there's pictures of the youth and the time that they had last week and their schedule and some of the really cool thoughts they had as the weekend came to an end. So it was um, a blessing beyond measure. Thank you for your ministry, and Emily, and Kirk, others. Let us go to God in silent prayer. God, we give you thanks for this glorious morning. As we celebrate you this day, as we celebrate the, the joy of baptism, 
as we remember our own baptism and live our baptism this day. Lord, we give you thanks for all the families and friends who got together this past Thanksgiving week and weekend. We pray safe passage upon all of those who will be traveling here this day and throughout the upcoming week. Lord God, we continue to pray for those who haven't enough to eat in our midst. We pray that we may do your work and reach out to them in, in faithful witness uh, to put food on their tables as well. Lord God, we, we celebrate all the upcoming events of our church and all those things that will draw us closer to you. We give you thanks for families and friends as, as they gather here this morning to give you worship and praise. Lord God, uh, our thanks are beyond measure. Lord, but we also know there are many things that weigh heavy upon our thoughts and deep within our souls. And we also lift them up to you, Lord, because we are not strong enough to, uh, to take care of all the things that need to be taken care of in our lives. And so we, we pray and reach out to your world, its leaders and its people, especially those in the Middle East, Lord. And we just pray for the, the tenuous uh, peace between the Palestinians and, and Israel. May that not be tenuous, but permanent, Lord God. And may it, where anywhere there is violence, may your peace intercede. Lord, we pray for our great nation and our leaders, our community leaders, and, and all those who, who are part of, of making this nation great. Lord God, we pray for our families. We pray for our friends and our neighbors. We pray for those who can't be here this day, those who are sick, homebound, hospitalized, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. And Lord, we, we lift up to you this day the, the family and friends of Bill Clark, the family and friends of Dustin, and the family and friends of Johnny Bryan. Lord God, we just pray your, your watch here upon those who grieve their loss, that their tears may turn to tears of joy, knowing that the one they have lost is firmly within your grasp and the certainty that by faith we shall all be rejoined with them and all those who have gone on before them in your house, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Lord God, we, we also lift up to you Terry and Don, for John and Wayne, for Kirsten and Cal. Lord, we also celebrate all the new beginnings and all the ministries. We celebrate our youth and children and all the, the leaders that, that are leading them closer to you, Lord God. And we also pray for those who are part of our armed service, for Kimberly and David and Natalia, for John and Catherine and Jeremy and Robert, for Kyle and Stephen, for John and Matt and Joshua, for Paul and Scott and Jerry and Ty. Lord God, hear our prayers here this day, and may your Holy Spirit rest upon each and every one to heal their bodies, to nurture their faith, and set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to continue the good work that you have begun in each and every one of us. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's chat. about what those mean. When you when you drive around and, and a lot of leaves a lot of trees have lost their leaves, haven't they? But there's one kind of tree that never loses its leaves. Do you know what it all is? Yeah. 
evergreen. And so we decorate the church with evergreen because that means that, that God's love never ends. It's a symbol of God's never-ending love. And, and I have something here that's kind of neat, too. I like green. Well, a wreath is something very special, too. Not at the beginning of this wreath. It's at the end of it. doesn't have one, does it? Well, how about an end? Is there an end to the wreath? There's no end either. What do you think that means? It's round. Yes, that's true. It means it's round, but it also means that it, 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 it gives us a symbol of God's never-ending love. So when you think of a wreath and you look at a wreath during the Christmas season, think about God's love for us. It just never, never, never ends. And then the Christmas tree. You see all those different symbols on the Christmas tree. Those are called prisma. We would call that a prisma on the Christmas tree because all those symbols have something to do with, with our Christian faith and with Jesus and with God. And so sometimes go up and take a look at some of those things. Uh, maybe have someone read what the what the back says. There's some of those things, some really special things in the back, and some of you learned some of those too, didn't you? Yeah. And so you're part you're part of that Christmas decoration too, because just like uh, Faith and I are baptized in Jesus Christ, and and they're part of this body of our Lord, and so we're all part of it in this never-ending love of God, and 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 the evergreen. God loving us always, and God's love never fails. So when you look at Christmas decorations, think of the grain, and think of the wreaths, and think of the trees, and think of all that kind of stuff. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your your love that, that doesn't end for us, that, that keeps going and going and going. And bless the children, bless all of us here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, why don't you come up here this morning? Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as this scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our soul. Lord, may your word come through me, or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to get it right. In Jesus' name we pray. scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Revelation, the first chapter beginning in the fourth verse. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sin by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Throughout history, we as a people wanted to have a leader. We wanted to have leaders that, that protects us, who cares for us, and who gives us some sense of purpose. Despite God's presence with the early Hebrews, who, who led, God led those folks out of, out of Egypt, they still wanted a king. They still wanted something more than God to lead them. I'm not sure that much has changed, even today. For today, we desire leaders that satisfy our needs, take care of our wants and desires. So we appoint pastors. We elect public officials and appoint team leaders 
to make sure our lives run just a little bit smoother and a little bit easier. We like to think we are rugged individuals, but the truth be known, we'd rather have somebody else do it. We'd rather have somebody else lead, and we would rather have somebody else take the heat in case some of those ideas go awry. I'd ask for an amen for that, but you already know that's the case. As Americans, we pride ourselves in freedom and individuality, yet as we seek rocks to cling, sometimes they usually end up being weights that just uh, hold, hold us down, restricting our every movement. But in the midst of our longing to be led, there is something else. There is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last who will be with us, who has been with us now, even to the end of the age. This morning as a church, we celebrate not only infant baptism, but Christ the King Sunday. It's an odd Sunday, really. In the liturgical year, we just ended the season of Pentecost. And usually, when we end the season of Pentecost, we start this season of Advent four weeks prior to Christmas. But occasionally, we run out of days of Pentecost, and there's a gap between Pentecost and Advent. And so when they made the calendar, they said, we have to call it something. I don't know why they felt that way, but they did. So they called it Christ the King Sunday. I can tell you're all very interested in that little piece of history, but it's true. So today we're, we're, we're celebrating Christ the King Sunday because every once in a while we want to have a king. Traditionally, kings uh, took over other regions, and then even leaders, elected officials in our world, need to fight for supremacy, need to fight for, their, for what they stand on. They run campaigns to advance their agenda for the people they, they seek to serve. Even bishops within our denomination run campaigns so when they get the jurisdictional conference in July that they could be elected as bishops of the church. And so even the bishops of, of, of the main denomination of the Christian church are elected. They run on, on campaigns and they, they, seek, they seek the support of those who, who they are about to lead. But all those leaders are, are very transient. In fact, they come and they go. Pastors are reappointed. Uh, elected officials are either reelected or, or taken out of office. Bosses either retire or they leave or they just are demoted, whatever it might be. There's change. Stanley Hauerwas of Duke Divinity School wrote an article on leadership. And the fundamental difference, though, between leaders in the church and leaders outside the church, leaders of the church need to lead with truth. They need to lead with integrity. They need to, to be transparent, while other leaders, they need to run on certain issues. They need to campaign on issues that they may not have any control over, but they want to make sure people believe they have control over. That's the fundamental difference. All is good. It's just a different way of looking at leadership. So we can go back and forth. And sometimes, whether religious leaders or political leaders, we are quick to accept the panacea of a leader who says that they will support us, who will lead us, who will take care of our needs. We're so quick to that, yet we are so slow to accept the reality of the Alpha and the Omega, the leadership of God in our midst. For it is God who created us. It is God who binds our wounds, who sets us free, the God who redeems us. And it's with us all the time. You know, God doesn't campaign. God doesn't have to campaign. God is just with us, always has been, but sometimes in the hustle and bustle of our lives, especially during this time, in the hustle and bustle of the Christmas season, the Advent season, I'm sure none of you want shopping on Black Friday. I was going to say Black Saturday. I guess they all might be black if you're out shopping.
shopping, I'm not sure. But sometimes we get so focused on the, on the deals and the specials of the season that we lose track of God. Well, there are other things that, we, that may obscure the God in our midst as well. Other personal things that get in the way. Sometimes physical and emotional challenges. Sometimes financial challenges, sometimes marital challenges, all this sort of thing gets in the way and we begin to lose track of where God is in our life. In fact, sometimes our trust in God may diminish just a little bit because though we pray for something to happen, it doesn't happen in how we pray for it. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever prayed for something and it didn't happen? the way you wanted it to happen? God always answers prayer. Not necessarily how we pray the prayer, but God will answer the prayer. But we begin to lose a little bit of trust. For we have been burnt too many times in our human life that we feel the same God of the universe may be doing the same thing. And we start to question. God has always been with us, don't we? God will always be with us. God will always give us the strength. God will always give us the wisdom. God will always give us what we need to get through our day. So maybe that's why God went to such extremes to prove that. I was thinking about the Christmas Eve sermon. I don't know why, but I'm thinking about the Christmas Eve sermon. I'm not going to preach it yet this morning because it's not ready. But I was thinking about how God came to us in a stable, as a pauper, in the midst of shepherds that society could care less about, around animals that stink. You see, God came to us in our reality. God came to us with the birth of Jesus and as Jesus grew stones were thrown at him. All kinds of words were tossed in his direction. He was scourged. He was beaten. He was hung on a tree to die only to be resurrected on the third day. But guess what? As a result of that, as a result of God loving us more than anything else in the world, we are able to come here and joyfully say that we have been changed as a people and as a world. There is no more powerful word than the word of God that has come through Jesus Christ. Nothing else in God's creation has changed creation like the coming of Jesus Christ. See, we're at the advent of something incredibly amazing. This birth of this Jesus changed us. Will forever change us. We can't forget that. Sometimes we do. In the midst of everything going on in our world, we tend to forget a lot. I stand before you as one of those who tend to forget a lot. I didn't know whether it was turning 50 or not. But I think there's more to it. I think we forget God a lot. That's why we're here, to remember. To know that God has been with us all along. Perhaps hidden by our agendas and by our preoccupations, but God has always been there, standing in the gap to lead us, waiting for us to turn around. Because when we turn around to God, our lives will turn around in the process. And we will go on this path a more excellent way. Growing up, I remember Thanksgiving evening was a time to watch classic movies. Remember, it always seemed like um, all the oldies but goodies. King Kong was the one that comes to mind. That always seemed to play on Thanksgiving evening. If you didn't want to watch football, you could watch King Kong. Well, every once in a while... There's another one, the classic Wizard of Oz. You know that one? I was thinking about the Wizard of Oz 
when I was thinking about this sermon on Sunday, you're right, I have not gotten enough sleep this week. But I was thinking about Dorothy, the scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion. And they all went to great lengths to find what they were looking for, what they needed, a brain, a heart, courage. And away home, they followed that yellow brick road. Remember that? Following the yellow brick road. <laughs> they followed the yellow brick road, and they were focused on the yellow brick road, so much so that they didn't even see the trees moving around them, going through an enchanted forest. They were so focused on, on, on that road that they forgot everything else around them. All the while, they had within them what they needed to have a heart, to have a brain, to have courage, and to go home. And all they needed was a reminder. They were more focused on the yellow brick road then. They were focused on what was already within them that God gave to them. So this morning, I wanted to ask all of you, maybe think about it, go home and pray about it. So what's your yellow brick road? What are you so focused on that you forget the love of God in your life? That you forget the lordship of God in your life? Is it shopping? Is it your health? Is it the loss of a loved one? These are heavy things, folks. Is it politics? What is it that you are so focused on today that you don't see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? We don't have to follow the yellow brick road. God gives us everything. The alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. God said through the prophet Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. The alpha. And Jesus says, I am with you now always even to the end of the age. The Omega. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As I'm standing up here preaching God's word this morning, maybe those early church folk naming this Christ the King Sunday, maybe, maybe that's not so far off. Maybe before we enter this time of Advent that we ought to consider the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our life. The Lordship, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and the first and the last. Before we start Advent, before we celebrate Christmas, let us remember who Jesus is, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer. Maybe we need reminder that God is with us, especially in the blur of our own human existence. God is with us. And all we have to do is receive to believe. So as we venture together through this Advent season, and we celebrate the birth of our salvation, it's okay to go out shopping. It's okay to decorate your house. It's okay to sing Christmas carols to the radio and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. That, that's great. That is a wonderful thing. But never forget the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and the first and the last, the God of our ancestors, the God of our salvation. 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember that this is a God that will never let us go, will sustain us in our time of need, cry with us in our time of loss, and rejoice with us in our time of joy. The Alpha and the Omega will be with us always, even to the end of the age. For Jesus the Christ, Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Lord God Almighty, King of Kings. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for being with us from the beginning to the end, even to the end of the age. Lord God, help us to refocus our lives on you not to focus so much on, on all the things that are happening in our life, but as we draw closer to you, let us be drawn closer to our faith. Let us know the blessings that you have given to us and help us to use those blessings for God's glory. Lord, bless the gifts that we'll offer this morning. Bless them and multiply them to your ministry. Let the people of God say, Amen. Will the ushers please come forward for the morning offer? Just stay with us, okay? God is good all the time. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands through the eyes of faith. time you put a 
song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good. All the time Father, as we go out today, we ask that you would help us to put into practice what we've heard today in word and in song, and help us to be one step closer into being in your perfect will in our lives. Help us to love one another, help us to walk in faith and in power, and help us to be a blessing to those around us, Lord, as we receive blessings from you. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. See you next week.